All right, boys and girls, guess what happened today? The stolen Porsche was recovered with keys. Let me say that again. The stolen Porsche was recovered with keys. I got a lot on my mind. We're about to sit here and chop it up about my seven weeks in the car rental business. So let's go ahead and talk about it because I think a lot of you guys were 100% correct. What's going on guys? As many of you have surmised in the comments that the renter had something to do with this scam, I am 100% convinced that you guys were 100% correct and I'm about to tell you why. I got an email from the detective, I called him up and he said, your car has been recovered with the key. Now, this also, let's go ahead and talk about my seventh week. This is my <laughs> seventh week in the car rental business. So my Porsche will be returned. Let me explain the process. The detective has got to go out and process the car and they got to dust it for fingerprints. And if only his fingerprints are in the car, even though I have gotten it back, he still would be prosecuted. And this is kind of one of the things that I am just perplexed by is this generation doesn't understand consequences. Because, go ahead and put your theories down, because once again, as I posted the other day, I asked the detective a series of questions. And I was like, the detective told me point blank, if the car had already been reported stolen, he couldn't have entered it into the system. And once again, I've said this in previous videos, the car is very unique. It's a black 2010 Porsche GTS. A lot of people don't buy the higher level trims. They buy the V6, they don't buy the V8. So just in me, I'm just sitting there like, if there was a police report, I would have heard something by now because it's a very unique car. And this went live Tuesday, today is Friday, and my vehicle has been recovered with the key. Here's one of my theories that I think that happened. I feel that the renter liked the car so much he wanted to keep it and he concocted this story versus just bringing it back and like renting it when he could he concocted this story because the vehicle was found with the license plate taken off of it now i am not a car jacker but if this car was truly car jacked i feel that that porsche would have been in the container on its way to africa or somewhere I don't think this car was carjacked at all. I think this was some made up story. Once again, you guys were 100% correct because when he told me the story, and let's go through the chain of events. He told me the story after I messaged him and asked, when is he keeping the vehicle? That's when I got the story. I think it's something that he just made up real quick. He didn't really think about it and he just, dropped his story and he was driving the car, having fun. And I feel just like the dude with the Range Rover who point blank told me it's not a stolen car. I was like, you don't know the law, homie. And here's the thing, even though I'm getting the car back probably sometime next week, uh, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do about that a little later. He can still be prosecuted. See, th this is one of the things that this younger generation is like. Like the girl who flattened the tires on the BMW the other day and got ghost. It's like, I ain't do nothing. I ain't say nothing. I'm going to ignore this. Well, essentially, what I'm thinking about doing is suing her and also suing this dude. Take him to small claims court and cost him some additional pain because you know, this may become the house of consequences for young people. Because when I rented the BMW to this chick, I was like, man, you're young. And some, some, my spotty sense went off 
I kind of had a feeling she was going to be trouble. Mere hours later, she calls me, you need to come get the car. Not, I am sorry, my bad, oops. No, none of that. It's just like, I'm going to damage your property and I want you to come get it and I, I'm looking for something else. And I, I, I really think an auntie who was in the comment section, open up your store. Open up your store. Most people are good. The majority of my renters, they rent the cars, they don't wreck the cars, they pay for the cars. I got a few yard birds or the criminal elements essentially who want to stunt but don't have the money to stunt. So open up your store. You, you know, you, you will be a benefit to your community. You will serve people and you will feel good. Now back to this, uh, his name is Darius Ross. And if only his, it, like once again, I, I may go a little CSI in here. If his fingerprints are the predominant fingerprints in this vehicle, he will be prosecuted. And let me go ahead and tell you, I will have to show up in court and identify as like, yep, that's who I rented the car. I will show up in court. The only way he's getting out of this, and this is a plan because I fully expect to hear from his people because he's a young person. I fully expect because he's in his mind thinking this ain't no big thing and he can't get in trouble. This is no, th this is, this is his thought process. And he, essentially, once the detective goes out and, pro and processes the car and they come back, because essentially he will be arrested. They got to arrest him to get his fingerprints. So he will be arrested. He, he didn't see this coming. So he will be arrested. And if the fingerprints they take when they book him and arrest him are the same fingerprints that are all over this car, on the steering wheel, on the radio control knobs, he will be prosecuted. And I fully expect to get a call from his people because he's a young guy. Well, you know, please don't do this to him. You know, he made a mistake, young people. No, I'm gonna say to whoever calls me, if you don't want him to be prosecuted, you guys need to come up with $30,000 for my pain, my suffering, my aggravation. If you cannot come up with $30,000, we have nothing to talk about. That is the only way that he is not getting prosecuted. And he will, you know, I don't know if he has any felonies, anything. I don't know. This may be his first offense. He may get a slap on the wrist. I don't know. But since the SUV has a value of 17000 it's grand larceny, which is a felony. He could go to jail. I don't know his background. I don't know if he has any prior, if he has prior, and I wouldn't be surprised if he has prior incidents in a record this will weigh heavily on his future sentence if he has priors the sentencing will be heavier and harder so that's the only way he's getting out of it i will take time out my day go to court and point him out and like yes this is who rented the car and he kept it and he didn't bring it back but once again you guys were 100 percent great like honestly when I got the story, I thought it was fishy. It didn't sound legit because let's go ahead and talk about how do you get carjacked? You're driving a car. How do you get carjacked? And he told me she had to walk to a service station. So that meant that she was driving the car with the doors closed. How do you get carjacked when you're driving the car with the do doors closed? And since it's a Porsche, guess what? When you put it in drive and you take off, the doors automatically lock. Just like in my BMW. When I put the key in it, I take off, the doors automatically lock. So if she was driving like he said he was, how the hell could she get carjacked? You, you stop at a light, someone pull a gun. I mean, that would be my first instinct. If someone tried to carjack me with my doors locked, I had the car, I was in drive, I would have floored it and ran off. And if they shot me, oh well. I wouldn't have just like, oh, let me open the door for you, Mr. Carjacker. And oh, here's the keys, here's my phone. 
I don't even think this chick exists. Now, what I think that he did, Darius did, is once the cop called him, he's like, it's getting hot, and he just dumped the car. And then it ended up being in a tow yard. Once the detective goes there, because essentially, I, I knew, because I kept pressing Darius for the police report. It's like, you gotta find me the, you gotta find me the police report. And once again, I don't know what he was thinking, that I was just gonna sit around and wait and wait and wait forever until he come up with it. He was like, he's like, I'm telling you all I know. I'll check with this police department and it, it would be funny if his story is legit. That would be hilarious, but I don't think his story is legit because if this car was truly carjacked, why would they find the car intact with the key? Oh, we're going to jack this car and we're just going to dump it? I don't know. I don't know what carjacking mentality is. I have no clue. But also, what I've learned, and this is lessons learned, next time something like this happens, I'm immediately sending the demand letter. I am not even calling the police until I get the green card back. Just call them. It's like, you know, and this could happen again in the future. Um, I don't know. But I've learned that this was very interesting, really, really interesting. So I would immediately send a demand letter, call the police and get that car as it reported as stolen as fast as I can. Because you see what happened. This car was reported as stolen. It went into the police broadcast Tuesday at 5 p.m. Yesterday, Last night, the detective got an email last night. So Tuesday to Thursday. Once again, this is a unique car. It's not like it's a Corolla or a Honda or a Sentra where there's literally thousands of them on the road. I knew because I, I kept saying here like, dude, you, I need that police report. I need that police report. And I told him what I was going to do. And there's a lot of people who don't believe fat meat is greasy. And I was like, I'm going to do the report on you. And, you know, essentially, in my opinion, and correct me if I'm wrong, if this was a legitimate carjacking, it looks like he would have been breaking his ass to help me out. And it was a very lackadaisical, very save our fair attitude like that's all i know he didn't want to talk to the detective once again he's a young dumb kid and if we get to that point where he can be prosecuted i will prosecute unless they pay me thirty thousand dollars and because i am fully expecting to hear some phone calls from his grandmama his mama his people i'm fully expecting it because just like the dumbass who kept the Range Rover, who point blank told me it's not a stolen vehicle. Until the cop called him, he was like, oh, snap, this is, I can get in some trouble. And I heard the cop tell him, it's like, if you don't bring his vehicle back, you can be arrested and prosecuted. And at that point, he brings the vehicle back. He tells me a fake time because he doesn't want to face me because he knew he was wrong. He knew he was wrong. And th this is this is funny. And like for all you people who are talking about GPS trackers, I'm just deleting your comments. I've explained it several times over. And if you're too stupid, and I use that term with great affection to understand the words that are coming out of my mouth, then I'm just going to delete your comment and block you because someone in the comments actually put this in there that someone stole his car, he had a tracker, and they disabled the tracker. And this is why I want to have the hardwired kill switch trackers installed. Not this little thing that you put into the port under the dash. They can just snatch that out. So once again, I believe most people are good. And I believe most people are going to do the right things. And this is the way that I'm going to run my business. I am not going to live in fear 
and also to the moist men who feel that financing a vehicle let me go ahead and tell you what i'm gonna do uh once i'm gonna let the police detective do his thing process the car and as soon as i get it which i feel will be monday i am going straight to a dealership and i'm trading that bad boy for two cars and i'm done with it because emotionally i'm not attached to it and once again it was on the hit list i was like if i get it back i'm trading it in on two cars and i'm going to put the two cars on the platform that 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 was the plan from jump because i am learning my seven weeks in the car rental business that certain cars attract certain kind of people and the range rovers i got two range rovers they're all out I feel the dude that rent the Range Rover, he re-upped. And once I get those Range Rovers back, they're gone. Just like the Porsche, I'm coming out to SUVs um, because they ain't nothing but problems. For me at this juncture, this is what I've learned. Because I've had some young man feel it was appropriate to keep my property, not pay me, play these games, and feel that nothing's gonna happen to him. And if he goes to jail, I hope he gets prison raped. I hope that happens to him because this is just stupid. This is just stupid. I preach, I was homeless. This guy wasn't homeless. And I was able to build myself up to where I'm at today where I can pay cash for that car and for that car, live in this million dollar house through hard work and effort and not stealing from anyone. I don't get this generation like the chick with the BMW. She got ghost. It's like she she broke it and she like, hey, I didn't do nothing. I ain't going to say nothing. I'm not going to reply. And I am seriously thinking about suing her just to call her some pain, just to haul her ass in court and explain why she didn't pay me. So she is in Latonia. So I would have to go to DeKalb County and file a lawsuit. And this guy is in Atlanta and I would have to go to Atlanta to file a lawsuit. So that may very well happen just to cause them some additional pain and actually force them to show up somewhere and be accountable. I'm really thinking about doing that because I'm gonna see what happens with Darius. I have no problem mentioning his name because I honestly feel he was playing games a lot of you suspect it from the first video. It's like some may write about this. I even had two renters tell me he has something to do with it. I'm telling you, these Atlanta scammers. And also, I was watching a video about the PPP scammers. Same kind of mindset. I'm gonna go ahead and commit this illegal act and I'm gonna go on social media and I'm gonna post up about it and I need to check his social media because a lot of these guys are really stupid. They will do something like this and then flex on social media. You know how many criminals have been caught and prosecuted because they, this young man, and you, you can Google the story, he killed his mother. He was a young man in Chicago. His mother owned a hair salon. She gave him everything. And because he wanted to go to the mall and flex like he had ten thousand dollars cash this man took his mother's life the urge to flex the urge to stunt has contaminated the mindset of so many people because this bmw was nice i got it honest i got it by creating the business creating cash flow creating revenue and serving people these clowns these worthless individuals, they just want to flex and stunt. That's all they want to do, flex and stunt. And they don't want to do the work. And also, many of you are on the precipice of becoming criminals. And I'm going to talk about this. Other day, I had a, a moist man talk about your plan sucks because uh, there was a guy in the Toro space he was doing, talking about paying cash for cars. And I understand where this sentiment comes from. I used to be poor. 
I used to go through the J.C. Penney catalog. I used to go through the Sears catalog, and they used to call them the Wish Book. And I would like look at stuff I wanted and write lists. And I didn't understand what I needed to do to get the money to get the things that I want. So I understand what it is to see all these wonderful, beautiful things, and not have the ability to get them. I understand that. What I don't understand is the lack of character. The lack of character. You know, I talked about this before. At one point, I was on the verge of becoming a white collar criminal. And I did it once and I felt so bad, I never did it again. I never did it again. And I am one of my better decisions because here's the thing. When you do stuff like this, it becomes a habit. And sooner or later, this habit is going to get your cheeks busted because you're going to go to jail and you're going to be in there with the hardcore criminals. Prison rape is a real thing. Prison rape. And you got people out here who are doing stupid, illegal, dumb things because they don't think something's going to happen to them. Something's going to happen to them. And me, I ain't, I'm afraid of jail. I don't want to go to jail. I want nothing to do with the criminal prison system. This is why I pay my taxes. This is why I live a life that is honest and true. I don't try to scam people. I, this whole channel, both channels are based upon truth. Both channels are based upon doing it the right way. And to this moist man who's talking about your plan sucks, you want to know why you think my plan sucks? You think it sucks because you don't think you have the ability. You know in your heart of hearts that you are a sucker. You are a punk. You are a scared little bitch that doesn't want to actually put in the work to build a business that makes you money because it's going to be hard. It's going to take effort. You, like I'm seven weeks in and this month I'm trending toward $12,000. And next month, I'll do $20,000. July and August, I'll do almost $30,000. And then when it gets cold, I'll be close to forty to 50000 maybe November, December. And that's when I really start cooking with gas. I am someone with business experience. I'm someone that started with capital. And it's still going to take me six months to really figure this out and start making money. But so many of you clowns feel that you can start with no money, no experience, no capital, no credit, and you're gonna be making the kind of money I make just on your good looks and dreams and wishes. You are delusional. Just like this clown who took my car, because honestly, I think he's starting to sweat a little bit now because Essentially, until the police call them, they don't think nothing's going to happen. They're like, I'm good. I can keep doing this. I can do this. I can get away with this. Nothing's going to happen to me. And then when it gets real, I think Chris Rock or it was Dave Chappelle had this skit when, when keeping it real goes wrong. And this is keeping it real has gone wrong because Darius, Darius Ross is his name. He may face some very harsh consequences because like I said, I will take time out my day to go down there to court and point him out. I have no problem doing that. I don't care. If I was had a vacation plan, I would cancel it just to see him squirm because here's the thing. And this is the young generation going back to the chick who flattened my tires. I, I will tell you a rental story that's pretty positive. I had a young man tatted it up uh, hair and braids and stuff and he rented the Corolla and he was actually shocked that it had a full tank of gas he was actually shocked that the car was in the condition because a lot of people put crap on a hire car and he was like oh you legit and this dude has never been late he's consistently paid for the Corolla the Camry and he's had that car going on a month and I've had no problems with it so I cannot let 
the actions of a few influence me to create policies that are going to impact the many. Because like I said, you know, most of my renters are decent, hardworking people. They're just trying to make some money. They just need a vehicle so they can do Uber, DoorDash, and they're just trying their best. And I cannot become a demonic demon with all of these harsh policies. Like one thing I am going to do on the BMW, uh, if you're like under 21 or 21, I'm probably not going to rent that to you because this is one of the reasons like this car here will do zero to 60 in 3.3 seconds the porsche will do zero to 60 in 2.4 seconds that kind of power in the wrong hands I, I saw a video that was heartbreaking on youtube this man gave his son a lamborghini urus and he t-boned this woman and killed her i would never give a child a lamborghini a Corvette or anything like that unless I really sat down with him and said look with great power comes great responsibility this car is awesome it has a lot of power and you should drive it like a human being he didn't have that conversation with his son and his son was out there wilding out and he killed this woman and the you know you can google it on YouTube this dude killed a woman and this is why Fast cars and young people are not compatible, in my opinion. If I had a young child and I was buying them their first car, you know what I would buy them? A Honda, a four-cylinder Honda, or something like that. I would never, ever give a child of mine a 300, a 500, 600, 700 horsepower vehicle. I just think that's dumb because kids are, you know, if you know anything about the brain, you know when your brain fully matures? When you're about 24, 25. That's when your brain stops growing. I would never give a child, and like this, this like I said, when I saw her, I was like, man, you're young. My, like, spotty sense went off, knew she was gonna be problems, and she cost me $900 and ran like a bitch. No honor, and like I said, auntie, start your business because most people are good. Most people are good. But there is a certain segment of this selfish generation, you can't trust them. You simply can't trust them. They're not gonna do the right thing. They have no character, they have no honor, they have no dignity. Just like this clown who got my car and just kept it and didn't pay me and feel that nothing's gonna happen to him. Once again, depending upon what happens with the police, he may get away with it. I have to live with that. But what I feel that the detective is going to find is his predominant fingerprints on the steering wheel, the radio, and the exiting, and, you know, that's what they're gonna look for. And if that comes back that there are no, there's no foreign fingerprints, he's going to jail. Or he's gonna pay me $30,000. Because see, this is why you gotta hit people in the pockets because if him and his people have to really dig deep to come up with 30K, I guarantee you it's gonna hurt. And I will take that money and buy three vehicles, which will earn me anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 per month forever for the next two years. So essentially, I'll make that deal. You know, if you wanna play these games, it's gonna cost you. It's gonna cost you your freedom or it's gonna cost you a lot of money. That's where I'm at in this position because I fully expect to hear from his people because he's a young man and like please don't do this to a young man and let's go ahead and talk about this and, and I already rehearsed my speech I was like do you understand that if I needed that car to be in service to feed my family your son did not give a damn he did not give a damn so that's where I'm at he didn't care I don't care thirty thousand dollars or he will be prosecuted this is what we're going for and like I said once I kind of calm down and get a better handle on my time, I got to see if it's going to be worth taking these punks to small claims court because they don't have any money. I already know this. So I got to really think about that if this is worth me teaching these punks a lesson. Because I remember the first time I got served and I had to go to court, 
I was scared. And if I can strike that little fear in them, I don't know. I, my mind hasn't been made up, but I'm seriously thinking about doing that because um, I've lost about $3,000 in lost revenue on that Porsche because he was playing games. $3,000 is significant money to me. Shoot, $20 is significant money to me. Don't play with my money. And that's what he was doing. Like I said, once the cop called him and he realized that, oh, he's just not going to sit here and let me keep playing these games, I feel that he dumped the car, took the tag off of it, because um, I feel that the tag was on it. And now I got to call up Geico and put insurance back on it so I can actually drive it. I don't even know if I'm gonna get the tag. You know, I would just take the receipt and like, cause essentially as soon as I get that car, the day I get that car, I'm immediately trading it, immediately. I'm not even gonna bring it home. I'm just gonna put insurance on it right now, once I get through with this video, so I can pick it up and drive it on the roads legally. And then I am trading this. And I have a feeling this is gonna happen Monday or Tuesday. And I'm gonna get two more cars. I'm done with it because the personalities, because like I get two types of renters. I get people out here who are trying to work hard, make some money. I love those renters because you know what? Those are the renters that pay me. But when I get play a player energy or I get I'm kind of hot, the little girl who messed up the BMW, I think that she's not used to consequences because the way that she ran, like because she's attractive. And like I said, I haven't fully made up my mind, but I'm, I'm really thinking about uh, suing her. Because essentially, I was willing to work with her. I sent her a message like, hey, you know, this is gonna come up to 900, 820, because that's what I told her. I was gonna absorb the cost of, because she messed up the suspension, because I knew that the car was gonna need an alignment because um, she hit that pothole so hard that she, blew out not one but two tires she was driving too fast more than likely speeding and then she saw a pothole because essentially you see potholes they don't sneak up on you you see them and i got my license when i was 16 so i've been driving 26 20 30 36 46 i've been driving almost 40 years and i've never ran over a pothole and blew a tire you know why? Because when I see a pothole, I slow down. It ain't that hard. Also, I've never lost car keys. And one of the things I'm seeing is I've got a group of renters who are really responsive. They're on their B, they're, they're, they're on their JLB, they're doing, they're handling their business. And then I'm getting rid of the player bait attraction, which would be the Land Rovers. Uh, BMW doesn't seem to attract the player player types. The Porsche did and the Range Rover. That seemed to get the player player energy and they're gone. I'm just getting rid of them because they ain't nothing but a headache. They're expensive to repair and they just draw these clowns and these criminal elements because I remember Mr. Range Rover. He was so confident. This fool actually told me I don't do threats. He thought I was threatening to call the police. And he even said, it's like, you know, I don't do, I was like, I didn't threaten to call the police. I actually called the police on your punk ass. And that's when he got a case of the act right. And that's when he brought my vehicle back. Cause when he, I, I'm like, I don't understand these people. I don't understand these people, but so I'm not going to get a check because I got the car back and I will be able to take that car and trade it out and get two more vehicles. So today is Friday. So it ain't going to happen, you know, cause It'll be Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday of next week. And also, the Acura, the Mini, I'm not getting back today. I got people who want it. The Acura, the part's not coming in to Monday, so I'm getting that back Tuesday. And I might, I might get the Camry back today with the bumper. And one of the things that I'm seeing, because I might make a policy where if you're under 25, I won't rent to you. Because the guy with the bumper hanging off he was young the girl with the um flat bmw tires she was young 
and I might make that policy because that policy seems to work well for Hertz and Avis and National. And I might go ahead and tell them that if you're under 25, you can't rent my vehicles because this is where I'm having the problems. Uh, the Range Rover dude was young. The Porsche dude was young. This is consistently. And I feel that 25 is a good cutoff age that's going to get me people who are working, who need a car. Uh, the girl who had the um, Acura, I may call her back if I get the Camry and put her in a better car because she's a single mother. But this chick, she working. She trying. I will help you if you are trying. But if you one of these player, player, lazy, uh, I'm on social media and I see you can make all this money easy without busting the sweat. Screw you. I, I would run you over because you are a clown. You are a punk. You are worthless. You're just down here on planet Earth sucking up oxygen and you are absolutely worthless because you're not contributing anything to humanity. But the people who are trying to do the right thing, the people who are trying to work, I can work with them. But the player player types, so I might go ahead and make that policy that if you're under 25, you can't rent these vehicles because like that girl, I just, I just had a feeling and I rented it to her anyway. And once again, these are lessons I have learned seven weeks renting cars. And essentially I cannot be the only one. I consciously feel that many YouTubers who are talking about Turo, who are talking about hire car, are cons consciously leaving out pertinent details. Am I going to abandon this business like Erica abandoned trucking? No, because one of the things I know is once I get all these things fixed and I start buying a better car, because once again, to the moist man that feel that you can buy a $4,000 car that's going to hold up and people want to be rent, you are delusional. So I'm probably going to move the car price up to 10,000 because the Acura was only like 7,200 and it's in the shop and it has 170,000 miles. And that's another car that I'm getting rid of. I got a, a Camry with 166,000 miles. More than likely, I'm just going to get rid of it because I have a feeling, but it seems to run just fine. I don't know. I'm, I'm just kind of weighing that out. The other Acura only has 111,000 miles and I had a problem out of it. And the Acuras that I bought in the beginning, 98,000 to 120. So no problems with them. So once again, we will see, but I'm getting rid of the player player bait because uh, someone left in a comment that someone that rents exotic cars, they have nothing but problems. And like me, I've never damaged a rental car. I've never lost the keys. I've never done other stuff, but I'm a conscious person. If I go to Hertz and I rent their car, I'm going to take them their car back the way that I rented it with a full tank of gas, which is another issue. I, I, I'm like, you know, people don't want to bring it back with some gas. So the Mercedes went out today to a nice couple that came in town for a family event. So they look like they're a lot of fun. And I have a feeling that they're going to take care of the car and I'm not going to have any problems out of them because they're adults. And like I said, I may call Julio, who's my account manager, and just say, if they're under 25, they can't rent because, um, like I said, one of the things that happens is like with the BMW, it had to be towed. That was 171 and the tires cost 690. So that's $900. And even if she rented it for a month, she would have had to rent that car for a month for me to recoup that 900 bucks from her. And one of the things I'm consistently seeing is like the bumper hanging off. That's 1500. He rented the car. He only spent like 300 before he stopped paying. And essentially one of the things that hire car does, and I, I've actually one, two, three, Four, four people who rent it for me can no longer rent cars on hire car because they didn't pay me. Four. And I'm just sitting there like, you know, I got a girl with a Range Rover. She rents three days at a time. I, I don't have a problem out of her, but she's renting with a credit card. 
I do have problems with people who rent with debit cards because their money sometimes get funky. But that's all I got for you guys. So just to say that most of you were 100% correct, I 100 agree with you that Darius Ross had something to do with this. And I feel that Darius Ross is gonna face some consequences because I feel that once he knew that I had reported it to the cops, he dumped the car. And that's when I got my car back because if he had been dri caught driving it, he would have been arrested. And I think that's, I think, I think Darius at the moment is kind of scared because he doesn't know what's going to happen. Cause I don't know why Darius didn't assume that I would call the police at some point. And what I will know in the future is I would do this much, much quicker. Uh, I had a lot going on dealing with stuff. And I'm going to tell you anyone that tells you managing 20 cars on Toro or hire car is passive income is full of shit. It is not passive. This is almost a full time job. If I wasn't a YouTuber and I didn't have online courses, if I had a regular job, there's no way I could have done this. There's no way I could have done this if I had a regular job. There ain't no way. And also, this is something else that's funny. And, you know, a lot of lessons that I already know, like this is one of the reasons when I would sell stuff on Craigslist, I had short to the point ads. You know why? Because people don't read. In every one of my ads, I have our office hours from 10 to 6 p.m. Virtually every day that I have cars available, I have someone that will reserve a car at 7.30 and want to come pick it up. And you know what? If people would show up on time, I wouldn't have no problem with it. But they'll tell me they'll be there at 7.30 and they'll show up at 8.30 and I'm just sitting around waiting. So once again, we shut down. I may extend it to 6.30. 6.30 isn't that bad. But after 6.30, if you reserve a car after 6.30 or like at 6.15, you're going to have to pick up the car the next day. And I had a guy who wanted the car and he wanted to come get it 8.30 at night. And I was like, no, we're closed. And he's like, I want to cancel. So he canceled the rental. I actually feel that I um, headed off a problem. I have a feeling he was going to be a problem. I'm going to tell you why. Impatient, impertinent people are usually have a, a low, they have a, um, what is it called? Um, I, I forget what it's called, but they, low impulse control. And you want to rent a car at 8.30 and come get it, even though my hours, like clearly you didn't read the ad, you just saw the car, you clicked on it and you wanted to come get it. And I think little stuff like that is heading off trouble. So uh, he canceled, I'm glad he canceled. And anyone else that cannot respect that we're open from 10 to six, Monday through Friday. And also something else, I got a lot of people who will call me before they put in the request. Typically the people who wanna have a conversation before they put in the request is BS. And I'll, I don't even answer the phone. And um, probably this weekend, I'm on the phone strictly for this business that's gonna ring this phone and I'm gonna leave it in the office. Um, and when whatever happens on that phone in the middle of the night, I will see it the next day. And I'm not gonna pick that phone up during the weekends because if I don't build protocol systems and controls in now, this business could literally run you ragged. So that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one.